Good evening. I'm Bob Friedman from Friedman and Ransenhofer Attorneys. I hope everyone's doing well tonight. I've been an attorney for over 41 years. Uh, we have nine offices in five Western New York counties. We are discussing how to avoid probate issues with your will during COVID-19. During the next 30 minutes, I will be discussing why there is tremendous interest right now in probate wills and estate planning. The next, ways to avoid probate. Also, how to have your will prepared and signed without leaving your house during the pandemic. We will be concluding with the most common estate planning mistakes that people have been making and where you can obtain free estate planning information. And um, I welcome questions, which I can answer at the end. And if you have any other additional questions, feel free to call me, email me, or post your questions on our website. As usual, I have two warnings. First, this is not a substitute for legal, tax, or investment advice. You need to speak with your own advisors to see what's best for your particular situation. Each case is different. Secondly, be careful what you wish for. Sometimes avoiding probate can have some unintended consequences, and we will discuss what those consequences are. I've given hundreds of seminars over the past four decades. This is my first Facebook presentation um, because all of my spring probate and Medicaid asset protection seminars uh, were canceled due to the pandemic. So here I am uh, bringing the seminars uh, into your homes for you. We're going to condense 75 minutes worth of material down to 30 minutes, but um, we do have other resources available to you uh, for further information. The widespread illness and death caused by COVID-19 has many of us very concerned about estate planning now uh, for a number of reasons. First, um, all New York surrogate courts are closed except for what they consider to be essential matters. This really emphasizes and magnifies the delays caused in leaving your assets um, through your estate through probate versus leaving your estates to your uh, family and beneficiaries through non-probate asset assets. Uh, with non-probate assets, which we'll discuss, your family would have immediate access to your, um, your assets. The courts, staff, and the surrogates courts in Erie and Niagara and Genesee, where we practice quite regularly, uh, are very excellent. However, uh, there's going to be a tremendous backlog when the courts do reopen. So it's very important to consider the use of non-probate assets. Uh, many people procrastinate um, about doing estate planning. Um, they don't want to face their own mortality. So we come to a situation now uh, with the pandemic all a sudden upon us that people are panicking and need to have their wills prepared. Um, another result of this COVID-19 has been that people need health care proxies, living wills and powers of attorney in the event they do become disabled and need someone to make um, health care and financial decisions for them. Also, uh, the pandemic has brought on a need uh, for charities that are in desperate needs of, of funding, and people may also want to help their family members uh, through proper estate planning, family members who have suffered economic losses and losses of their jobs. So this is all uh, causing an imbalance if you have probate and non-probate assets we're going to talk about um, with the um, changes in the stock market, and also this is going to result in um, real estate values going down dramatically, um, especially with rental properties. Um, th there's already been a decrease in values caused by the doubling of property taxes in the city of Buffalo, and the new landlord-tenant laws have greatly depreciated the value of, of rental property, and it's going to be further depreciated by the, the inability of tenants to pay their rent. So, your estate can pass a number of ways, and one of the ways is probate. Uh, the way I explain the probate is that uh, most people don't have an understanding of it, but uh, probate is the 
passing of your uh, property that's in your name alone by way of your will. That's the process. And, and people say, well, I have a will. Why does there have to be probate? Well, probate is the actual the process of having it established that your will is valid and the court is completely satisfied as to the authority of the executor and the executor's granted certificates showing they, they have the authority to act as executor. So your executor can't go into, into the bank upon your death and access your bank accounts by presenting your will. The will itself does not give them that authority. Uh, certain papers have to be filed and documents have to be filed with the surrogate's court authorizing the executor to act. And, and, and when the court is satisfied that all legal requirements have been met, then they will issue certificates to the executor and he, he has the authority to do that. So people that don't have a, a will and die with assets in their name alone, um, um, that don't plan, well, New York State does have a plan for you if you don't do proper planning by preparing a will or, or other uh, documents for disposition of your assets upon your death. And if you die without a will, your estate won't necessarily go to, the, to New York State, that's uh, another myth, uh, but it may go to relatives that um, you do not um, wish to have receive your, your estate. So if you... Um, if you die with a, a, a wife and children surviving you and you have no will, your estate will go to um, a third to your wife and the rest to your, your children. Um, if you uh, pass away uh, with no wife or children, it will, it will go to your um, parents. If you have no parents, uh, it will go to your brothers and sisters. If you have any predeceased brothers or sisters, it could go to their children. So there may be many people that will in inherit from you that you have um, no desire for them to receive your estate. Um, so that's known as in intestate passing of your estate. And um, the probate process, um, and that also goes through the estate process. Now for a will contest, there's um, various grounds to contest wills. Um, you basically, you can't disinherit your spouse in your will, but you can disinherit your children. And many times, children think that uh, they can't be disinherited, and um, they may contest the will. So, uh, there's basically four grounds for contesting a will, and these are things you have to keep in mind. Um, the first uh, ground is someone doesn't have the mental, what they call testamentary capacity. Uh, testamentary capacity is you have to, to ha be able to have the proper mental capacity to execute a will. Um, you have to, first off, um, understand what a will does. Uh, secondly, know what your property is and um, understand um, who your relatives are that would in inherit from you if you did not have a will. Now, even someone with Alzheimer's disease could possibly sign a will. It's a very, it's one of the lowest thresholds of uh, mental capacity. That's capacity to have a will, uh, to write a will. As long as you have that capacity at the time you sign your will, then um, your will may be declared to be um, valid. If anyone wants to contest your will saying you didn't have the capacity, uh, if, if you disinherit a child of yours and they say you didn't have the mental capacity to uh, sign a will, they would have to prove that you, you lack this testamentary capacity. Uh, the next ground for the next ground for um, contesting a will is due execution, and that means that your will wasn't properly signed uh, before two witnesses. And uh, this is one of the very good reasons why you need to do this under the supervision of an attorney. There is a presumption that if you sign a will uh, that is supervised by an attorney, that it was properly executed. Now, if, for instance, um, I've I've witnessed thousands of wills um, over the past 40 years, and I can't remember what happened at a will signing, say, in 1980. I've only been called in once for um, a will contest. But I don't need to remember what particularly happened in 1980. I can just say, this is my procedure that I follow in every case where we uh, have wills executed. So basically, the will execution, you, know, you have to sign before... Um, to witnesses, and then you have to ask those witnesses to, to witness your signature, you have to, you have to declare that as your will. It's a rather simple procedure, but if it's not followed, then uh, your will could be declared invalid, and uh, your estate may pass 
by way of a, a prior will or may pass through what we call intestacy. Um, another ground for, another common ground for contesting a will is undue influence. That's when a person in a position of, of trust, um, it could be a caretaker, it could be a priest, uh, an attorney, um, overcomes um, your, inf uses their influence on you to get them, get you to leave your estate to them. That's, that's the burden of proof for someone that um, wants to contest the will. The fourth ground is duress, um, and that is when someone forces you to sign a will, such as holding a gun to your head. That, that's very uncommon, but um, where are threats of violence against someone to sign a will in a particular way. So we're talking about what's covered by a will. That's, those are assets that are in your name alone. And sometimes, very surprisingly, people call up about having a will probated, but there's, not, there's no necessity to have the will probated because all the assets are non-probate. And that's what we're going to talk about now, which assets are non-probate and uh, what the effect of that is. So uh, very often probate's not necessary because people have all their, have all their assets joint, own, jointly owned or with beneficiaries. Um, so we're just going to run through this list of non-probate assets. Um, there again, you should talk to your advisors about that. This is the reason, uh, the first step in having your will prepared is that we have our clients complete a, a will intake form that's available on our website so that we can see, among other things, as to uh, how their assets are titled, where it's jointly owned, what type of assets they have. Um, many of their assets are non-probate. And uh, the usual reaction we get after people have signed their wills is that they, if they knew it, if it was that easy to, if they knew it was that easy to prepare a will, they would have done it a long time ago. As I say, people are putting it off, putting it off. Now, during the, the COVID-19 crisis, uh, people are um, rushing to have their wills done. Um, people that have been had had drafts sent to them months ago, or are just, just thinking now they need to have wills. So uh, this is something, like I said, that your the values of your stock and real estate um, are going to be decreasing. And if you want to have, you may want to have equal distribution among your children as to your probate and non-probate assets. Uh, so this is, these are what are non-probate assets that do not pass through your will. Uh, and they, we do not, you do not need to wait for surrogate's court to reopen or wait for surrogate's court to appoint the executor. These assets are generally uh, readily available. Uh, first is life insurance. It has, if it has beneficiaries, but if all of your beneficiaries are deceased, uh, then it will be payable to your estate. Uh, if there are no beneficiaries, it has to be payable to your estate. So sometimes we see these old life insurance policies from the 50s where someone named their mother as the beneficiary and she's long gone. So uh, if there's no beneficiaries um, that are living, then it goes payable to your estate. Um, there's um, what's called UTMA accounts, Uniform Transfers to Minor Acts accounts, and um, all this information I'm giving you now, we're going to have available on our website in, in various different formats. So um, uh, you'll get further details. You don't have to worry about taking uh, voluminous notes. Um, but these are accounts set up for uh, individuals under 21. A U.S. savings bonds, some U.S. savings bonds are non-probate if you have joint owners or they're payable on death. Um, your investment accounts, your stock accounts, uh, as of... Um, maybe eight years or so ago, you can indicate beneficiaries on your stock accounts, what's called transfer on death. Uh, also IRAs and 401ks, you designate beneficiaries on that, and those are, um, and you can delay payment of tax by naming beneficiaries. You don't want those payable to your estate. Those can be rolled over to your beneficiaries, um, so they can set up IRAs and 401ks and then they, in turn, can, can designate beneficiaries, and you can delay the payment of uh, income tax. Annuities have beneficiaries. Um, there's joint bank accounts, uh, but I caution you on jank, joint bank accounts. You discuss that. You should discuss that with your advisors. Um, joint checking accounts that are set up for the convenience. If you add your son or daughter as a joint owner on your checking account for convenience only, 
that account becomes a probate asset. It will be automatically under the control of your son or daughter that you put on the account, but that rightfully should be passed according to your will, and there's, there's hundreds and hundreds of lawsuits involving that. So be careful. You may want to, in, instead of adding someone as a joint owner, you may want to have them down as power of attorney. Um, and there's, there's various types of bank accounts that avoid probate. Uh, there's, you can have your bank accounts in trust for, payable on debt, um, transfer on debt. Um, also, you could, another non-probate asset is one automobile up, worth up to $25,000. Next of kin can transfer that to the DMV when the DMV reopens um, without going through probate. Another way of avoiding probate is also to make gifts during your lifetime. And um, another area, a uh, very common um, method of non-probate asset distribution is living or inter vivos trusts. These are trusts that are created by your, um, on your, during your lifetime. Now, Susie Orman, people often say, well, Susie Orman said I should have a trust, a living trust. That all depends on your situation. We need to analyze uh, what the nature of your assets are. Certain assets cannot be put into a trust, and we have to see what your objectives are. The living trust can be revocable or irrevocable. For Medicaid asset protection, for nursing home care, it has to be an irrevocable trust. So these are something you should talk to. Uh, you drop a trust, and then you have to transfer your assets into the living trust, and that can any assets that are in the trust will avoid probate. Uh, corporate stock can be set up as a non-probate asset. Uh, many people are using limited liability companies for um, vacation properties or to, to pass the... Uh, assets on or to keep the assets within the family. You can discuss that with your um, advisors. Um, another non-probate asset which is quite common and used um, in Medicaid planning is the, the life estate deed. Uh, many times people to protect their home in case they have to go to a nursing home transfer the, their home to their children and keep life use so that upon their death it automatically passes to their children. So that's, made, that's done with a deed. There's a couple of drawbacks to that. Uh, even though you will still get your property tax exemptions, if your children go bankrupt or are sued, it could affect the real estate. Uh, there's some other forms of real estate ownership also that avoid probate. And that's why when we do um, meet with our clients about their estate planning. We need to actually see their deeds sometimes if they own properties. For instance, they own property with, jointly with a brother or sister or a business partner. Um, there's various forms of ownership, real estate ownership that avoid probate. First is um, if you own property with your spouse. If you were married, when you purchased your house, that's called tenants by the entirety. Uh, when your spouse dies, it'll automatically pass to you. Um, and for non-married people that own property jointly, it can be joint tenants with the right of survivorship. If you own a real estate, maybe you inherited from um, your mother or father, and you own it with your, your brother, it, with joint tenants with the right of survivorship, if your brother passes away, then it automatically passes to you. The only type of real estate ownership, or not, the only type of real estate ownership that would that would not avoid probate, that would have to pass through your estate, is if it's owned as tenants in common, tenants in common. So that's very important um, for us to see your deeds if we can explain to you the uh, probate or non-probate non assets of your um, estate. So um, there's a number of things that you need to talk to your advisors about to figure out whether you want your assets to pass through probate or non-probate, whether a living trust is appropriate and so forth. Um, these, are, these are some of the more common things we see every day. Um, if you're estranged from your children and you're concerned about will contests or whatever, um, then uh, if, if your children or if your children are fighting, we, we find that quite common. It's probably an everyday uh, occurrence that we observe in our office is uh, sibling rivalry, where uh, siblings are not getting along either while their parents are alive or especially after they're alive. Um, and uh, one's the executor and the others don't like the way the job is being done. 
So you have to take all that into consideration. Discuss that with your, uh, your advisors. Um, asset protection. Um, are you trying to um, preserve your assets in case you have to go into a nursing home? You know, do you want to qualify for Medicaid? Um, in, in my Medicaid seminars, um, I'm one of the underlying things I'm telling um, the people is that you may not want to avoid, uh, may not want to preserve your assets in case you have to go out on Medicaid because even though nursing homes cannot discriminate against Medicaid patients, they are. So even if you want to go in for rehab, um, they're going to tell you their beds are not available. And uh, if they've seen you've made gifts within the fast, past five years, or if you don't have probably over $100,000. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, another thing is privacy. Uh, probate's a completely public record. Everything's public. If you want complete privacy, then you may want to go through non, using non-probate distribution of your assets, which may be completely private with living trusts, with bank accounts, uh, no one's going to have access to that information unless they're authorized on the account. Um, another concern is if you if you have a second if you have children and you uh, are in a second marriage if you want to protect your children but still um, have have some income for your spouse you have to look at all of your what sort of income cash flow and liquidity you need in your retirement. Another big aspect too is maintaining control. Um, you can't have everything with especially with the Medicaid planning for nursing home. You may have to give up some. You have to may give up some control, or may have to give up all control if you want to preserve your assets in case you go into a nursing home. Um, do you have any issues regarding business succession? If you want to pass your business on to uh, future generation, have it smoothly tra transfer, then you need to talk to your um, advisors about that. About having a smooth um, transition in case you pass away, where the ownership continues on and management continues on. And there again, we emphasize, I mean, we emphasize this many times, but it's been especially important after the past four weeks is whether your family can endure the costs and delays of probate. Uh, probate can be a rather straightforward process, but under, with the courts being closed and with the backups um, that we're encountering, you may want to talk to your advisors immediately about um, possibly transitioning over to non-probate. Um, distribution of your assets. So, uh, we're also concerned about medical decision making in the event of disability, uh, advanced directives. Do you have um, health care proxies and living wills? So, if you become incapacitated, someone else can make decisions for you. And what I say in uh, my Medicaid uh, asset protection seminar is one of the most important things I tell people to walk away with is that you need to have a power of attorney with a gift writer um, that can be invaluable. And if you've never done any Medicaid planning where you can preserve a substantial amount of your assets, if you've never done any planning and you unexpectedly end up in a nursing home. So power of attorney can go into effect immediately as soon as you sign it. Um, it's, it's rather straightforward. Um, you should talk to your advisors about that. So, um, and also go and see whether there's been major changes in your family which is going to necessitate you having to update your will. So, um, as far as the benefits of avoiding probate, um, it could save a considerable amount of time. Um, it, whether we're in normal times or during this pandemic here, um, there can be delays um, in having an executor appointed just because of the, the, the Erie, especially with Erie County um, surrogates court, we've practiced quite, a, quite, a, uh, quite often. Uh, very competent uh, staff there, but still they're opening up a thousand cases a month and um, there can be delays um, and some complications. We don't have time to go into it at, during this presentation, but there's um, it can be very complicated with people that don't have have never been married and don't have children and we have to we have to locate distant cousins because they don't have any aunts or uncles living. So the cost can be, enormous, enormous cost savings with non-probate assets. Um, and also to, to, to uh, gain control, um, we talked about privacy. If you want to avoid will contests, then you can um, do that with non-probate assets. Uh, also, um, you can look at my Medicaid 
presentations online too, where there's um, no Medicaid recovery by New York State or the counties for non-probate assets. They can't recover from your estate if it from non-probate assets. Uh, so the risks of avoiding probate um, is very often we see people set up these living trusts, but they don't fund it. Okay, the living trust um, doesn't avoid probate unless you transfer the assets um, into transfer the assets to the trustees. You have to deed your real estate to the trustees, change the names on your accounts. Um, drawback too is you would not. You, can't, you would not put our IRAs in a trust. So we need to look at all your assets and how, they, how they're titled. Um, uh, as I said, another disadvantage is, is the convenience checking accounts. There's been a lot of lawsuits regarding that when you add a child onto your, your account. And another uh, risk of avoiding probate, especially over the past few weeks with the uh, stock market values going down and real estate values um, plummeting is that you need to coordinate your non-probate asset values with your probate assets. So if you want to have equal distribution uh, to all your children, um, then, um, then you need to examine that. So, um, and finally, as far as joint ownership um, or life estate deeds, those are two joint tenants with the right of survivorship and, and life estate deeds. Those are two things that um, if your joint owners are sued or get divorced, um, it could cause quite a few complications. There again, another disadvantage of avoiding probate. But with a will, you can, as long as you're still competent, you can keep changing your will and um, changing around who your beneficiaries are and what you're leaving to. But uh, if you have if you set up joint ownership now, then... Um, if your joint owners, if you have add your children on, if they're sued or go bankrupt, it could cause some catastrophic uh, financial matters to you. So very quickly to uh, sum things up, uh, some of the most common estate planning um, mistakes that we see are uh, believe, people believing that they're too young to need a health care proxy or, or power of attorney. As I often say, the two most um, notorious um, cases about healthcare proxies and living wills were women in their 20s and 30s. Karen Ann Quinlivan went into a coma from a drug and um, alcohol abuse, um, went to a coma. And we all have seen Terry Schiavo, who languished for 11 years while her parents and her, her ex husband. Um, fought in court over disconnecting feeding tubes, and I'm sure she didn't want to be remembered the way she was on TV. So that's all the more reason you need a health care proxy and a, and a living will. And also a power of attorney. Um, also, you need to safe keep your will, your power of attorney, and all your other forms where they're accessible if needed. People say they have health care proxies, but they don't know where they are, so they're of no value if they don't know where they are. Uh, many people think they're too poor to need a will, and uh, they can't be farther from the, the um, truth. One of the largest um, multi-million dollar estates we had was a woman who had really um, hardly anything at all. Uh, however, she was involved in a, a horrendous accident in which she was um, incapacitated by a large truck and ended up in a nursing home. And um, fortunately, she did have a will so she could leave... Um, assets to who she wanted them to go to. Another major mistake is not updating your will, your power of attorney, and your health care proxy after a divorce. Um, also, another uh, mistake we oft often find is appointing the wrong person as your executor or your power of attorney. Um, and um, we've seen many cases where, especially children, there are, are appointed powers of attorney who may have drug uh, or gambling problems are taking advantage of their of their parents. And the executor, too, has a uh, very important responsibility. So you have to be careful, discuss that with your attorney as to who would be best be your, your um, executor. So we've just about run out of time. Um, we do have, uh, on our website, we do have a uh, WNY-lawyers. We do have a... Um,
We do have materials um, on this very subject that we talked about in much greater detail. We do have, uh, it just was posted today, we have um, a guide on uh, 15 ways to avoid probate with the COVID-19 crisis. And um, we have uh, other presentations. Uh, we have a more detailed presentations on 15 ways to avoid probate. And we do have our will intake form. It's at WNY-Lawyers. So check out our COVID-19 um, estate planning pages. Also, um, I think as I mentioned at the beginning, um, we do have the um, capability of preparing your wills now without you leaving your house. We can, you can fill out the will intake form on our website, either online or you can, you can print it out and uh, email it or fax it or send it to us. And then uh, we will discuss that with you by phone. And that we're doing will signings on a regular basis, either by, we can do it either by FaceTime, um, which was uh, authorized by Governor Como's executive order of doing uh, will signings and notarization by um, Skype or FaceTime. Um, or we're, what we're doing um, primarily is drive up where you can stay in your car, drive up to one of our offices and um, we will talk to you over the, the, the phone and we will witness your, your um, very quickly witness your, your wills, answer your questions, and we can notarize your documents and, and witness your documents such as your health care proxies, your powers of attorney, and also uh, we're doing living um, trusts on a regular basis. Um, so uh, you can, uh, we have quite a few questions here. We can answer those if you'd like to, to uh, listen in on that. Um, so, um, someone has a question about um, using legal Zoom will. Is as good as a as a lawyer written will? Uh, my aunt was thinking of using them. Is it better, or is it better to use a lawyer? Well, uh, this goes back to one of the things I said before is that if your will is executed in the presence of an attorney's supervision, that there's a presumption that it was duly executed. So if someone does contest your will, um, the, um, there's less proof that would be re required. Um, so uh, that's, that's one of the considerations. There's so um, to have a will done by an attorney is probably not, isn't going to cost you much more than a legal Zoom will. And um, each, each case is different. Um, majority of the wills um, are pretty similar, but each case is different. So you really need an attorney to prepare your will um, and a, be able to ask questions on an attorney to make sure that the will is exactly the way you want it to be drawn up. And what the and um, what legal zoom can tell you is such things as how is non probate ownership of assets going to affect your will. So to get your questions answered, to have it properly prepared, and to have your your will properly um, signed and executed, um, it's it's a good investment to use an attorney. Uh, the alternative is if your will is contested, especially if you if you if you're disinheriting children or other people that would inherit from your estate, the cost to your estate could be tremendous if your will's not properly drawn up. So if you're, if you're trying to save um, $10, it could end up costing your estate um, tens, tens of thousands of dollars. It could be 50000 It could be 100000 if there's a will contest. So your, your beneficiaries may not get what you intended them to get. Um, so... Um, so another question they have is, um, how can estates be probated during the COVID-19 pandemic? Well, uh, for the most part, they, can't be, they cannot be um, probated uh, because we can't, um, even estates that were already in the process of, had, were filed before the court shut down, um, um, filing of, even though we have electronic filing, has been stopped of documents have been stopped, so um, there's no way of, of getting the papers before before the court, unless it's an essential matter. And that's pretty much on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, it, it may be some ex um, exigent circumstances, but for the most part, uh, estates cannot be probated 
Um, you'd have to, we'd have to have uh, an attorney check with the court to see if, if that's uh, an essential matter, possibly. But the, the run-of-your-mill estates cannot be um, probated. Um, when the court says it's okay to file papers, whenever that may be, um, maybe a couple months off, then, uh, then they'd be e-filed, and then there's going to be there's going to be a tremendous backlog. I assume there's going to be thousands of um, cases backlogged on uh, estates. So um, at the current time, there's no telling how long it's going to take to have your estate probated. Um, next question is, uh, does my executor have to be a New York resident? Um, no, your executor does not have to be a, um, a New York resident. They just have to be a resident of the of the United States. Uh, probably about fifty percent of our um, of our uh, the estates that we handle, the executors actually do uh, live out of state, and um, they don't necessarily have to be here in New York State. So there is a um, it is possible that you, if you want to name a relative that's living out of state that to act as ex executor, there's no reason uh, why you shouldn't do that and uh, to, to find a good executor. So um, I think that concludes the questions. Uh, as I said before, uh, feel free if you have any other questions, you can post them uh, on our website, WNY-Lawyers, and our, uh, on our contact forms. Um, you can email me or you can... Uh, you can call me. Uh, I got a couple more questions. Um, is it okay to make hand handwritten changes on my will if I initial them? No. Uh, we often see people do that. Uh, and we've even seen some, we've seen quite a few wills like that. People decide they want to change uh, who's getting their, their guns or their, they want to uh, cross, delete someone from their um, will. So the only way to do that. Um, would be to um, either have to drop a new will or you do a codicil. And a codicil, you have to go through all the same formalities as you do for a will. Um, so th that's not possible. Now, so handwritten wills are not permitted in New York State. If someone wants to write, a, um, write out a will in their own handwriting, uh, that's not permitted in New York State. Some other states, it is permitted. So if someone wrote and did a handwritten will in another state, and they die in New York State, then New York State possibly may, um, may honor that. The only handwritten wills um, authorized by, um, in New York State are those by uh, people that are um, soldiers that are away at war. Um, next question is, uh, my sister was appointed executor of my mom's estate two years ago, and she has done nothing to sell the house or close out close out the estate. What can I do about that? Uh, we see this quite often, um, probably a few times a year, where um, it's often sibling rivalry, whether the sister wants to show that she's got, uh, got uh, has all the power or whatever. Uh, but this is a fairly common problem where the executor has not done anything. Now, it all depends on what county you are in. Um, in, in some of the um, more rural counties, um, they will um, send a, the the court will send a strong letter to the executor saying that if you don't close the estate out or give us a good reason uh, why the estate is still open, that we will uh, revoke your executorship and you will no longer be executor and you'll be replaced. But in more in the, the more of uh, the more populous. Um, Counties, they don't have the time to do that. So what you need to do is um, you should, um, if you're not represented by an attorney, then you, need, you should hire an attorney um, to uh, file a petition with the surrogate's court uh, demanding that the, the sister uh, sell the property and render an accounting. Um, and that, that can be a, a rather drawn-out process even uh, through the courts. But in order to get things going, uh, if uh, the executor can't be convinced to move things along, then you need to file a petition in the, the county surrogate's court. Um, another question is, how is it possible to have documents notarized and witnessed with social distancing mandates? Um, so we're, we're doing that on a regular basis, and then um, according to Governor Como's uh, executive order, we can um, we can notarize documents either on um, 
Skype or FaceTime. Um, or I said we're doing the drive-up service also. So they did set, New York State did set up a procedure where if you do it by Skype or FaceTime, um, that uh, you have to have the ability to uh, scan it and um, and email it or fax it that very same day to the person who witnessed it. So you can photograph it, scan it, and it has to be all be done the same day. And then you would mail. The original documents uh, to the person that's notarized it and witnessed it for you. So if you have those capabilities, you can even take a photograph of it with your phone. But that, in addition to mailing it back to the notary, you also have to uh, fax it or email it to them. Um, so uh, another question about uh, where are wheels usually kept for safekeeping? Uh, that's a question we get. Every, we get that question every single day, actually, about about keeping your wills for safekeeping. Uh, there's only one original will. Um, I think maybe some rare occasion um, attorneys have people sign more than one original wills, which is really a bad idea because of the fact that um, if you're going to be um, if you want to destroy your will, you don't want and make up a new will. You don't want these other wills floating around. So most of our clients keep their wills with us for safekeeping. The other alternatives is, is, is um, the other alternatives are to um, some people keep it at home. You should not keep it in your in a safe deposit box if the safe deposit box is just in your name alone, because no one will have access to it upon your death. Um, and so you can also keep it with surrogates court for safekeeping. Um, that is, uh, it's not actually filed, it's in safekeeping service. Usually it's free, except in Monroe County, they charge $40 for it. So that's your choice. You can keep it with your, your attorney. You can keep it um, yourself and your safe. And, or you can keep it in surrogates. So um, I thank you all for uh, joining me tonight. And uh, feel free to contact us if you need any assistance with any of your um, estate planning needs. And... Above all, stay uh, safe and healthy. Good night.